did somebody say? Bawa? RX Vegas 64 coming up. RX Vegas 64 install coming up right after this. Hey everybody, welcome back. So here are some of the things you're going to need to complete this. You're going to need an open end to dual 8 pin cable like this one here. It can be a 6 plus 2. You're going to need some quick splice taps like these as well as some electrical tape and a Phillips PH1 bit as well as a hex 2.5. The flexible extension that you see here is optional. You're also going to need some crimpers for those quick splice taps and a knife of some sort to cut the insulation on the cable. And then last but not least, you're going to need a graphics card of choice. Moving on, let's show you what we're starting out with. So I have a Mac Pro 4.1 flashed to a 5.1. It is a 2009 model and I'm currently running an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 680 2GB model. And now that we got all that out of the way, let's get into the install. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is you need to unhook your Mac Pro and put it on either a table or a bench. <clears throat> to remove the cover, you're going to want to lift this lever in the back, and then this just folds down and comes off just like that. The next thing we're going to want to do is remove all of your hard drive caddies, as well as any PCIe cards that you have. So we'll go ahead and do that now. To get the PCIe cards off, we're going to remove this bracket by taking these two thumb screws off and then all of these cards will just pull out. Make sure you disconnect the power cables from your graphics card if it is utilizing either one of these six pin ports. After you take the two thumb screws out of the bracket here, you're going to push the button on the fan and we're going to slide this forward and that's going to unlock the rail on the motherboard so that we can pull these cards out. I'm also going to disconnect these from the main board just to get them out of the way. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to remove the op optical drive bay. And that should just pull straight out. And then if you have a drive in there, you just want to make sure that you reach in there and you disconnect the cables before trying to pull this all the way out. The next thing we need to do, we need to remove both of these two screws here to take this back plate off. And once you get the screws out, this should just pull out like this. Next, you're going to want to disconnect this right here. This is the main power cable for the power supply. You just squeeze the two clips at the top and then pull straight up. To actually remove the power supply, we're going to take four screws out of the bottom that's holding it in the case. And you can tell which four they are because they're hex screws. So it's this one, this one, and then the two below it by the motherboard. And I'll see if I can zoom that in a little bit. So you can see the difference, like Phillips, and then that's a hex. We'll go ahead and get that knocked out. We'll be right back. So a little update on the power supply screws. They actually have Loctite on them, probably 
it's, it won't focus, but they have Loctite on them. And so I couldn't break it with just my regular screwdriver. So I actually went and got this kit at Lowe's and it didn't come with the right size bit, but it had this small ratchet that fit down in there. And then I had, had to get a, a quarter inch bit to fit in the thing that was still the same size, two and a half hex. This is how I broke the, uh, the torque on those screws to get that out so I didn't damage the board or strip the screws. Also, I got a bunch of dust in my computer, so I'm gonna go clean it out with my air compressor real quick and we'll be right back. To get the power supply out, we need to slide this cable through this slot that's underneath the fan and then it should just pull right out. Once you get the power supply out, we're gonna be working in this area here that's just uh, in front of the first sticker that's closest to the plug. So you don't wanna go past where this sticker is. We're actually gonna remove it here in just a second because it's gonna cause problems when you try and reinstall the power supply um, with wires covering up where the screws will go. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut uh, mine off. You can go ahead and use the scissors, but all I have available is my knife. So I'm just gonna make sure that I'm cutting away from the wire so I don't accidentally uh, cut into any of them. Then you're gonna wanna go ahead and just pull this off after you get it um, cut. And depending on the model and the age of uh, your Mac Pro, you may or may not have the middle wires here taped together. So some models don't have them taped. Mine already do. And then the other thing is some people use some rubbing alcohol or WD-40 to clean off the glue on all of these wires. I'm not going to do that for this video. Uh, this is not something that you're going to see every day. And whether you remove the glue or you don't remove the glue is not going to affect um, what we're doing here. So if your middle wires are not taped together like mine are here, this is where you could use some of your electrical tape and then just tape them together. Um, preferably in uh, roughly the same spot as what you see in the video because we're not gonna wanna work past where we have those taped wires as we discussed previously. And then so for the focus of this, we're just gonna be worried about the thicker wires on the outside. So you should have four above and four below uh, the middle wires that are thinner that are taped together and so the outside wires on both the top and the bottom are ground and then the inside two wires on both the top and the bottom are going to be your 12 volt power. So um, one thing you might notice is that we're going to have more ground wires on our actual uh, open end cable than we do on our power supply so um, you're going to need to put two quick splice taps on one of the ground wires for this. So in my case, I'm gonna go ahead and put two on the very top outside wire um, because I just think that's gonna be the easiest to do. It's also worth mentioning that you're only gonna need three of the four cables on your power supply for your 12 volt power because we only have three wires on our open end uh, cable. So it's, it's no big deal. It doesn't matter which one you choose not to use, but you only need three of them. And then you want to make sure that these splices are facing straight up. So when we're installing the quick tap, you're going to just cut it with the knife and then you'll be able to feel it. So like when you're cutting through the installation, you'll be able to tell when you get down to the wire and that's when you want to stop. And you're going to go just all the way around and you're going to want to try and make a little bit of a gap between the installation. And initially I tried doing this with just my fingernails and then I found that it worked better if I just used a tiny flathead screwdriver. And then when we put the, uh, the tap on, just make sure that they're all facing straight up. And as you install these, you're just going to, want to make sure that you stagger them so that they're not all on top of each other, sim similar to this. Um, one trick that I did was after you install one, I would use another one opened and I would place it on the wire so that I knew what kind of spacing I would need. And then I would make a mark on the wire where the quick splice uh, touch the insulation so that I knew where I needed to cut and with that we'll get into putting our first tap on so you just want to basically score the insulation you don't want to like push very hard or use a lot of muscle because you could accidentally cut through some of the wires so you want to just make sure that you're taking your time and that you're going slow and that you're just working your way around the insulation until you get a break in it and then once you you get one side cut 
it makes it a lot easier. You, you can start to kind of pull it apart um, while marking or scoring the back side of the wire. And then from there, you'll just put the uh, splice on and then crimp it. So we'll go ahead and, and go through all of these. And I might speed up the clip, uh, but I'll show you the process. And then we'll come back if there's something important to discuss. And this is what you're looking for. So you're just looking for just a tiny little gap in the wire. And so, and you also just, like I said before, you want to make sure you're not cutting any of the actual wires. So I pulled this apart um, after making a slit insulation. And so now we're going to go ahead and put that quick splice tap on and just make sure that when you're installing them that you're facing them uh, straight up. It's also important that after you crimp it that you you check it so you make sure that it's not loose or it's not going to come apart and that the actual connector um, fully snapped together um, because you don't want this to fall off when you're trying to hook everything up. From here I'm just going to continue to put the uh, connectors on and finish this up and then we'll be back and I'll show you what it should look like when you're all done. And this is what the final product should look like. So again, we have two taps on the very top um, ground wire, and then I did not use one of the power wires. And so um, it's kind of hard to see in the video, but I did not use the lower 12 volt wire um, within the top four bunch that you can see here. Um, so now let's get to reinstalling this in the machine. So the first thing we want to do is we want to feed the cable with all the quick splices back through that slot behind the fan and then we're going to just kind of gently work this through here and then um, the power supply should slide into place. So the next thing we want to do is take our open-ended 8-pin cable and I'm going to put some electrical tape on the end to hold all these wires together and then we're going to want to run that up behind the bracket that the optical drive bay sits on and so if you can see the cable that is already fed through this gap that plugs into the back of your optical drive if you have one we're going to use that exact same channel or spot or gap or whatever you want to call it to run this open-ended 8-pin cable and the next thing that we need to do is we just need to add the other end of the quick splice tap to our open-ended 8-pin cable so that they can actually plug into the quick splices that we just put on the power supply. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to strip this and make it extra long because I found that um, using the blue connectors, which is a size smaller than what the yellow connectors are in terms of the wire gauge size, they didn't fit into the actual yellow quick splice taps very well. And I wanted it to have a good connection. So instead what I decided to do was to make the wire longer and then I kind of just doubled it up, um, folded it back and forth a couple times and twisted it together so that we got a nice um, good thick wire to put inside of the, um, the yellow uh, taps. And so after I get all the wire stripped I'm just going to go ahead and put all of the connectors on there and then crimp them. And then from that we're just going to plug each one into the connectors that we installed on the power supply. After you get these connectors crimped you just want to make sure that they're tight so that they don't fall off and then sometimes when you crimp them it changes the actual location of the spade connector from uh, the crimping so you just want to make sure that it's still in the center of the connector and if it's not then you can either use your fingernail or a screwdriver to move that back so we get a good connection. And then this is what it looks like if we uh, or when we have them all done and then this is what it looks like with everything installed and from here we can go ahead and start to button the computer back up and it's just going to be in the reverse order of everything that we have taken apart.
So we've gotten everything reassembled and now all we need to do is just plug in those 8 pin cables that we just wired up. And then we're going to go ahead and do first boot and see what happens. If you're not running open core, but you are running a version of Mac OS that supports using, in my instance, like a Vega 64, you may need to reset your NVRAM or your PRAM by holding Option Command PR uh, while booting until you get that second chime. Uh, otherwise, you might boot to a black screen. But if you are using open core, then there's no need to do this. It should just work fine. And in my case, first boot was an absolute success. As you can see here, we have the AMD Radeon RX Vega 64, and it's working flawlessly. So that about does it for this one, guys. If you guys want to see some benchmarks, uh, hit me up in the comments and let me know. Otherwise, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See you in the next one. Peace.